Harold B. Deputy Mayor Suzak. With all the things that are going on in the in the local news and in the in the national news, um, I'd like to have have everybody try to reach in to any thoughts that they have on how they can find the strength to approach the challenges that we have and still keep a positive attitude towards one another. Pledge allegiance. To the flag. Pledge allegiance to the, to the flag. To the, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Here. Councillor Ongaier. Here. Councillor Arnone. Here. Councillor Bosco. Here. Councillor Sakala. Here. Councillor Crisotti. Here. Councillor Davis. Here. Councillor Denny. Here. Councillor Fall. Here. Mayor Ludwig. Here. Councillor Muller. Here. There's 11 members present, none are absent. In case of fire, we have the doors that are in the back. Please exit right or left from your seats in orderly fashion, or you can go out to the doors on our left, your right, out the first doors that are, will be to your left, go down the stairs, hook around the corner, and go right out the door. Item number five, minutes of the preceding meeting, special meeting March 5th, 2018. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. By Councillor Falk, second by Councillor Muller. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor, by a show of hands. Those opposed, abstentions? 10, yep, okay. And regular meeting March 5th, 2018. So moved. By Councillor Denny, second by Councillor Crisotti. <coughs> Any discussion on the, on the motion? Hearing none, by a show of hands, all those in favor? Opposed, abstentions? 10 and 4, one abstention. Item number 6, special guest, uh, the folks from Rachel's Challenge. Please come up. How you guys doing? Good. Is the red button on right in front of you? If you could, your name and address for the record. And it's, the floor's yours. Welcome. Is it shining red? Hello. There you go. There you go. Okay. What are you doing? Hello. Hello. <laughs> my name is Kara Edwards. And my name is Eliza Alisea. We are the representatives of Rachel's Challenge Club at JMK Middle School. Today we are here to inform you about the kindness events that our school has participated in. One thing our school did was a Super Bowl camp food drive. If you didn't know, the Super Bowl teams were also the school mascots of JFK and Enfield High School. Eagles versus Patriots. Each morning during Homeroom A, students were allowed to drop canned goods in boxes of their choice, either the Eagles box or the Patriots box. Then at the end of Homeroom A, that would be called the first quarter, then the next day quarter two, and the next day after that quarter three. The cans at the end of each quarter would then be counted up to see which team had the most points. Then that team would be the winner. Um, at the end, of all the quarters, the team with the most cans would win, and of course the Patriots won. We donated 276 cans to the Enfield Food Shelf. We also have a random acts of kindness week at school. Each day we would have special things for people to do. Monday was Say Thank You Day. Tuesday was Wear Purple Day since purple was Rachel Joy Scott's favorite color. Wednesday was where we would take people's trays and throw them out. Thursday is where positive hearts slash words were hanged up around the school, across the school, they had positive messages that had like positive words to encourage students. <laughs> Lastly, Friday is Random Giveaways Day. We give out candy, pencils, high fives, and etc. This allows students to participate in kindness activities to start a chain reaction. We also had Hat Day on February 9th. Each student that wanted to wear a hat had to donate a dollar to participate. We raised $128 for the Enfield Police Department for Special Olympics. Another fun week we have is Spirit Week. Each day is you wear a certain color or a piece of clothing to show your school pride. Last year, we did Spirit Week and we had a Mix Match Day, a Hippie Day, a Wear Your Wing Color Day, and a Sports Day. Many people participated in, uh, um, sorry, we also <laughs> had prizes for the most enthusiastic outfits. We have 60 members currently in Rachel's Challenge. We also had PJ Day and we raised $835. This money was donated to Connecticut's Children Medical Center. We also going to paint rocks for Enfield Rocks Day, which is about spreading joy. 
we are going to put kindness words on the rocks and hide them all over Enfield and then people can like pick them up and their day will be better. Thank you for having us and we appreciate your time. And, and remember, remember to, to start, start a chain reaction. reaction. Thank you very much. Does anyone want to ask any questions why we have the two young ladies here? Good job. Nice job. Yeah, keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Yep. Just wanted to thank you for all that you do with Rachel's Challenge. I think it's a wonderful thing that you do. <clears throat> I've gone to the high school programs and the ones at JFK, and it's so really it's really important to all the kids for all of us. So thank you, and I'm going to look out for those rocks. <laughs> As always, when our students come before us, you guys spoke very articulately. Keep up the good work. Good Thank job. You. Good job. Just one, one more. <coughs> Go ahead, Bob. Yeah. Uh, thank you, girls, for uh, for coming. I'd also would like to recognize the uh, advisor to your club, Miss Beebe, who could not make it here tonight. Uh, she does an outstanding job with you, and I know that each and every one of you uh, are committed to this to this club and keep up the great work. It's uh, an outstanding. Uh, community outreach that you do have uh, to all of, all of your events that are planned throughout the year. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you for coming. Item number seven, public communications and petitions. Before uh, we ask folks to speak, again, we ask you have five minutes first go around. Three minutes a second. We have an hour of public communication if needed. Again, we ask folks not to use uh, personalities, and I will recognize folks to speak before the council. Just your name and your address. Anyone would like to speak before the council, please? Jack. Jack Sheridan, 7 Buchanan Road. Um, I had some things that I brought the uh, Fuss and O'Neill report in on the things that I had quoted from the last meeting. And one of the things that I'm not going to go over it all again because I had taken some of the things that I read, but I highlighted a lot of the things in here. And one of the things that brought my eye was it says materials that are present in the school where concentrations of asbestos were less than 1% while the EPA and the CTDPH identify materials containing less than 1% as a non-asbestos containing material. So it, it's considered less, you know, if it's less than 1%, and that's what they were finding. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention too, because I already talked about the PCBs and the fact that uh, the materials with PCBs uh, containing less than 50 mg um, are determined to be uh, not toxic and so I, I'd like to enter this as a part of the record so that uh, you, you'd have this because it, it's got all the things that I've previously talked about and more and uh, so if you do that please through when you're done Jack just hand it to Suzanne please okay yep. thank you the next thing uh, I wanted to talk about was I, I have this history of what went on with the uh, middle school and the original uh, Bless you. Bless you. the original uh, assessment of what it was going to cost and one of the sentences here without reading the whole thing it says the data clearly indicated such repairs at JFK costing 13.9 million almost almost 14 million um, less than what it would have cost Fermi so it says, note the figures for JFK were confirmed by the Silver Purcell Associates, showing the repair cost uh, compliance would come to 16285600 And that was to fix, and it said that would easily uh, take care of it. So I'd, I'd like to uh, let you know that that's, that when you're talking about going from here and in the same report, they go on to say that they 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 came up with a, a ninety five million dollar deal to fix. Okay, okay, so how it got from let's call it seventeen million to uh, ninety five million, I think the voters in Enfield realized that uh, what was happening, 
and that uh, there's a little case of greed going on trying to get more uh, grants that come out of my other pocket. So uh, I'd like to make sure that whoever's looking at this, they consider the fact that this thing, and, and, and also, if you look at the paperwork and follow the trail, you took all of the things, the, the boilers and everything, out of that school. It wasn't part of the uh, um, Honeywell project because you figured for sure that this thing was going to fly at 95 million. And when it didn't, then this is what you have, nothing. So I think that the uh, consideration toward uh, doing it at a, at a more minimum, the way it was originally assessed, should be a consideration and pri take priority. Um, the other thing I mentioned last time was that we keep talking about the school and the minimum budget requirement. Well, I hadn't looked that up in a long time, so I looked it up. And uh, it's been changed since the last time we dealt with it. And it clearly now, this, there's an amendment uh, A from the House, this is House Bulletin 7019. And uh, it says effective July 1st, 2015. On the current law, towns can ask the State Department of Education for an MBR reduction under only one of the ways the law provides. This means the town cannot see a reduction for a decrease in enrollment and another deduction for increased efficiencies. This bill removes the limit, thus allowing towns to use more than one MBR reduction mechanism. So uh, my main thrust here is I wish that you'd all make yourselves available to this. I got it right off the internet. And uh, it says um, that you can actually, and, and that's the other thing, we closed two schools and we didn't take advantage of this reduction. And during a budget time, when we're all looking for ways to try and condense the costs, this I think is surely gonna be a way to save us some money. Uh, it says by law, and unchanged by the bill of school closings receive a dollar for dollar M MBR reduction with no cap. So if you want me to read this whole thing to you, I'll come back and read it. Otherwise, please uh, avail yourselves of the report. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Appreciate it. Anyone else like to speak for the council? Does Whoever wants to go first, go right ahead. Yeah, Jessica. Hello, Welcome. Jessica Duga, 101 Cottage Road. Um, so I sent a letter to all of you on March 7th and I heard back from some of you and I appreciate it. And I wanted to make sure that all of you knew the content of the letter. So I'm just going to reread it for you this evening. And it read, Dear Members of the Town Council, as you may be aware, on March 24th, 2018, there will be rallies held across the nation in support of March for Our Lives. March for Our Lives is a group whose primary focus is to demand that the United States government take steps to stop the now commonplace massacres in our society. It demands that loopholes in security checks be closed so that weapons do not fall into dangerous hands. It also strongly advocates that private citizens no longer be allowed to own any weapons whose sole purposes are to assault other human beings. Members of the United Methodist Church have organized a rally in conjunction with March for Our Lives, which will begin at the Enfield Town Green at 10 a.m. on March 24th. We will march to Enfield High School and return to the Town Green. All necessary permits have been obtained, the Enfield Police Department has been consulted and notified, and the event has gone live on social media. The citizens of Enfield and surrounding towns are signing up to be a part of this event. We no longer want to live in fear that our children will be harmed en masse as they work to obtain an education. We no longer want to worry that harm will come to any of us as we attend the theater or a concert, or that our workplaces do not have adequate hiding places or escape routes. We want our government to recognize that it has a duty to protect us. March for Our Lives is not looking in any way to take away Second Amendment rights. Many of the organizers of this Enfield March are actually gun owners. However, enough is enough, and we believe it is time for lawmakers to set aside partisan politics and do something productive. 
I invite you all to join us either in your official roles or as citizens of the United States of America. I invite you to march with us and show the students and the parents in this town that you value them, that you value their opinions, and that you value their lives. Show the rest of the state and the rest of the country that you've been elected to represent our town because you care about the best interests of the people who live in it and you want to see changes that ensure their safety. Please sign up for this event and march with us, stand with us. I included a link to the event in the letter that I sent you and I can provide it for you again this evening if you would like me to do so. I ask that you not only sign up to come, but that you encourage others to come as well. Together, we can make meaningful changes in our world. Thank you. And that is how the letter read. I implore you to please, if you are going to be in town, or even if you're not, cancel your plans if you can. Come and march with us on Saturday at 10 o'clock. We'll kick off. We'll have very brief introductions. We'll tell people the rules that we have found out from the Enfield Police Department on how to march peacefully. Everything's going to go off without a hitch. We've worked really very hard on this event and it's so important for our town and for all of our students to know that you support them. Um, and so I just invite you again to please come and stand with us on Saturday. Thank you. Thank you. How you guys doing? Welcome. Welcome. Um, hi, my name is Lee Braun, 17 Light Street. Um, I don't want to be next. I do not like watching my mom cry over shootings. I do not want any schools to be a war zone. Every morning, there's a little thought that goes through my head. Is it my time? Is it my day? I want the government to change the rules so that guns can only be bought after your background is looked at. I want gun I want gun that guns that are sold not to be military style semi automatic. I would like bullets to be less powerful on the open market. I would like to make sure that the next person who wants to buy a gun has to wait long enough that if they were going to kill someone, maybe they would be found out before they were armed. By helping organize this march, I hope to change the way the government looks at students. We can be the voice of reason in a crazy world. That was the reason why I joined this push to put the march together. When your kids express those kind of feelings, you really have to start thinking that maybe you should stand up. And when I got the phone call from Jess of we could do this, I agreed with her, we had to do this. We can't just sit down anymore. When a 17-year-old shows us the way, like they did in Parkland, Florida, we kind of, as adults, have to stand up. So after a very short group discussion, we put together a sibling march that would coincide with the others across the country. The March for Our Lives is part of an ongoing protest against the violence in our schools and in our public venues. We are marching from the town green to the high school and back again at 10 a.m. on Saturday, March 24th. That's this Saturday. There will be no snow. There will be no snow this week. We are hoping for the community support. We are hoping to inspire our government to listen to all the issues and try to solve this problem quickly. And I don't know how to solve this problem. So many things go through my head every day. We just need a change made. We need to make our students safer. We need to make our public safer. And we need to limit access if that makes us safer. We need to be pro-life with the lives that are sitting here in front of us. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. I appreciate you guys listening to us. Thank you. Good job. Anyone else like to speak for the council? Bob?
Bob T. Katz, Woodgate Circle. Not the, not the place that there was a problem. <laughs> 1962, uh, Enfield High opened. They had an open house. <clears throat> and a fantastic number of people came to the open house, 4,000. And there was never a traffic problem to school, in and out. No, no articles about any accidents or any deaths or anything. And <clears throat> when the school opened, it was 10 through 12. There was 3,000 students on double sessions. No articles about any traffic problems at all. In 1979, the state needed a middle college. They, they chose Enfield High over Fermi, but the school board wouldn't give it up. They gave them Kosciuszko Junior High. And um, this was in March 23rd, 79, the school board voted to uh, keep Enfield High. When uh, JFK was built, they uh, built six, 63 academic classrooms. I don't know what happened to all of them, that they need modular uh, classrooms, because there seems to be plenty of classrooms. But over the years, I, have no, I didn't find any articles of any problems at the intersection of Enfield High and uh, Enfield Street. The fire department recently did a study. They said you don't need a traffic light. They're the experts in traffic. The police department did a study. They said you didn't need a traffic light. They put a turning lane in. The State Department uh, of Transportation did a traffic study. They you don't need a light. So if anybody thinks that they know more than these three uh, organizations, I'd like to have them speak up. But. They said you do not need a traffic light on Enfield Street at the school. The dangerous area is from 190 down the high street. That's where the cars do about 90 miles an hour. That's the dangerous area. So I'd like, like you guys to put that to bed. Just because the architect put it on a drawing and planning and zoning approved, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's cast in stone. We don't need a traffic light there. There's never been a problem. So I don't understand why there's a big push for a traffic light. We need that money to be spent to fix the light problem on the south side of the school, which nothing has been done. And the other thing is, why are all those automobiles, those junk cars there? There's two new Chevy Impalas there with plates. You can tell they've never been used. The, the snow piled up. There's two unregistered cars. There's a van there with the window open, full, was full of snow, and the right, the right tire is going down. I mean, why are we accumulating junk cars in back of the new school? And if we don't need these cars, why did the, the Board of Education buy these cars to use? Because nobody seems to be using them, and if you don't need them, it's just, it's, it would be like zero-based budgeting. Uh, the town manager says we need new drapes in back of the town council chambers. Well, the question should be, do we really need the drapes? So if the drapes are bad, just take them down and get rid of them, don't replace them. That's the way you do budgeting. You ask the question, do we really need that? Do we need this automobile? Nobody's asking those questions at budget time. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak for the council? How you doing? Hello, good, how are you? Welcome. Thank you. Okay. My name is Linnell Valu, and I'm at 11 Marble Road. This is Michaela, and we're here for to support one, each, one another through this uh, frustration that we're in right now. So my son is a student at Henry Barnard School. He's a kindergarten, uh, he's in kindergarten. And can you hear me okay? Yep. Yeah, okay. Is the red lights on? Yes, yep. thank you. Um, I started volunteering in the class uh, about December and um, noticing a lot of things that were brought to my attention, like leaking water from the ceilings, buckets throughout the classroom. Um, I was a little concerned about it. Um, kind of confronted a few other t um, parents throughout you know, the classroom and wanted to see if there was a concern with them. Um, nobody really knew about it, so it was kind of brought to our attention. Um, 
couple other times we went in there, um, I confronted you know the principal about it, and nothing was really being done until the frustrating part is that my son um, came home one day from school, rubbing his eyes, and he started his eye was swollen shut. He couldn't even open his eye. Um, that's when I started, you know, getting into this a little bit more. Um, noticing now there's a big problem. The next time I went in there, um, they started putting air freshener or air purifiers throughout the classroom along with air conditioners, and this is in the winter. They're putting air conditioners in the class, just trying to band-aid the situation. You could smell mold when you walk into that classroom. I mean, it's, um, it's really, really bad. Uh, my kid is, he's five years old. He's in the classroom five days a week six hours a day. Now he's breaking out, he's having constant bloody noses, which he's never had ever in the past before, and um, complaining of headaches. He's five years old, and I don't really know what a kid knows what a headache is, you know, until he really is saying my head is pounding. Um, I just, I, it's been, I, I brought it to the attention of the Board of Health or the Department of Health um, just because I think this is something that the kids should not be in this classroom five days a week. Um, I mean, I think if it was anybody's child, you would, you know, be upset about your kid coming home with a swollen eye from kindergarten, and now it's affecting his day-to-day -day routine. Um, you know, his teacher's not there a lot of the times, you know, um, and that affects his, um, his education, you know, he should be there learning. He shouldn't be disrupted with this matter. I just really would love if, you know, maybe we could get him into a different classroom, these children into a different classroom, and try to stop band-aiding the situation. Um, because I think if anybody went in there, they could, you could just smell it. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not good. So this is a fellow parent, uh, Michaela. Hi. And she has... I'll move this over a little bit. My name is Michaela Messier. I'm at 17 Drummond Road in Enfield. I'm new to the town, so um, I was a little nervous to come up here, but I am a mother of my daughter, Ella. She's also in this classroom. And um, please bear with me. I'm a little bit passionate about this because she's my only daughter, and um, I just really want what's best for her. So... Just to give you a little background, I did take notes because I didn't want to miss anything. Um, first and foremost, as I think you guys are all aware, there is definitely a mold issue um, in the classroom. You can smell the mold and mildew as soon as you walk in to the point that there are HEPA filters now being run consistently and the children are having to go to school with multiple layers because the air conditioner cannot be turned off because it needs to be filtering the air for it to be safe for the children to breathe the air. Um, one thing that had happened to me that was really what kind of set me over the edge is that my daughter doesn't stop moving, ever. I'm not exaggerating. People say to me all the time, like, oh, when does this slow down? It doesn't. She came home from school and was lethargic, saying how sick she felt. She was pale in the face. She said that her head hurt and her throat hurt, and she just laid on the couch for hours. And I'm like, okay, flu's coming, you know, it's the time of year, it's fine, we'll get through this. By nine o'clock that night, she woke up perfectly fine. And that concerned me more so than had she gotten the flu. If it turned into something that was like a virus going around, that would have been one thing. But this was clearly something that had happened at school for something that she was exposed to that created this reaction that she had. And she never complains of being sick ever and I find out from the teacher that she's consistently going to the nurse's office because her th she has a sore throat she feels scratchy or itchy she has a headache my daughter's six years old she shouldn't even know what a headache is and the fact that she's complaining on a daily basis at school of having a headache that's alarming um I also volunteer in the classroom often and recently I was in the classroom and brown liquid was dripping from the ceiling, splattering 
all over the children's artwork on the wall. I mean, it was splattered all over it and still splattered on the floor. The teacher had said that the custodian did come in and clean it up. 20 seconds left. Sorry, go ahead. I don't mean to cut you you off. 20 more seconds. Okay. The custodian came to clean it up, and when I brought it to the principal's attention, he brushed me off and said he grabbed the custodian. I feel as a tax-paying citizen that my child deserves a safe and healthy environment to have school. Whether they need to go to another school, if this is a bigger issue than just the classroom, it needs to be figured out. But I'm at the point of wanting to remove my child from the school because it's not safe for her health or any of the other four and five and six year olds in that classroom. It's not acceptable. Thank you guys for your time. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank Thank you. Anyone else like to speak for the council for the first time? For the second time? Seeing none, I declare public. Go ahead, Bob. Bob T. Katz, Woodgate Circle. You know, I brought this up before. We need to spend the money on the elementary schools. When my parents were looking to move out of Springfield, We rode around every weekend to the different towns, looked at the elementary schools, and that's how parents do it today. They're more concerned with the elementary schools. They could really care less about the high school or the middle school when they have young children. They want, that's their first priority. We have to spend the money in our elementary schools. If if you want this town to grow and have people move in and reduce, and more houses built and reduce the tax rate, we have, to, we have to change our priorities, and the town council has to act and do something. I mean, we're fooling around with JFK, JFK, and that's all we hear, JFK. How about fixing the elementary schools? Five out of the six elementary schools needed boilers. Six elementary schools needed new parking lots. We should, we should have a committee to see exactly what we need to do to make these schools safe. Because what will happen, you'll have a class action lawsuit against the town. You know, nobody's acting to do anything to fix the elementary schools. They're just getting lip service, and that's got to stop. That's where the priority is. The elementary schools, the, en- the town of Enfield, not the school board, is responsible for the maintenance of the schools. And that's when I was with Jack on the committee, we took that responsibility away from the school board and gave it to the town. And what did the town do? Roof, roofs are leaking, parking lots are got potholes. It's a mess. If you look through those, what needs to be done? There's a lot of work that needs to be done, and that's where we should start. Thank you. Thank you. Jack. Jack Sheridan, 7 Buchanan Road. There's a couple of things I shorted myself on before. Um, the Honeywell energy thing that we instituted. I was reading that over recently, too, and it talked about, uh, we, we had just recently talked about tracking that and having you guys report on how that was going and what, if anything, savings and so forth. And the... I remember that when we first talked about that, we talked about if something happened where we stopped using the schools for their intended purpose, like two of them that we've closed since. Um, Honeywell was very clear in talking about how that would impact the savings and the estimates of savings. I wonder if that's been calculated and deducted from what they originally uh, predicted for, for savings. And I'd just like a status report on what's happening with that because, you know, the voters voted for it. We won't, you know, think it's the right thing to do. And um, when you start, you know, changing the, the game plan and saying, okay, now we have fewer schools in the system and how's that going to affect the savings? And, and when I go back to that uh, thing I talked about before with the, uh, the uh, House Bill 7019, it also talks about the fact that those savings – can be calculated into your reduction in the amount that you spend on your minimum budget. So those are all kind of dovetail together. 
and I think that I and, and the people of Enfield deserve a report on how that's going. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Sir? Thank you. Welcome. Richard Waska, Newlands Road. <clears throat> um, when we were together on a prior occasion, we, were, we talked about the delay in the testing that had to be done, uh, that in fact the delay was about two weeks. And at, at the last council meeting, uh, my recollection is that the testing was imminent. I'd like to hear from the council what the results of that testing were when we might have the results of that testing. Uh, I'm, I'm all the more concerned to hear young moms sit here before the council tonight and talk about youngsters with eyes that are so swollen they can't open their eyes. And that reminded me of a question I had asked previously, and that is, what do you now know about the numbers of children who have been sent to the nursing office at the school? How frequently those children have been sent there? What classroom they come from? What teachers are sending them there? Uh, I'm on the record in this regard previously, and I'm anxious to know what, what has been learned since this was last put before you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak for the council? Mikhaila Mess here. Um, one last thing that I just right, wanted address to. Address me, I'm sorry. Uh, 17 Drummond Road. One last thing that I um, just didn't get a chance to say is that um, a fellow parent I know did call the Board of Health, and um, I was at the school the day before the Board of Health did come and saw a gentleman in a hazmat suit in the school. And it's just alarming to think of the things that could potentially be being done to. Um, as Linnell said, band-aid the situation and kind of brush it under the rug. And it's just really scary because like she said, if all of you guys do have children or have had children in schools like this, I don't think that you would be okay with that. Um, my daughter has potential to be a huge athlete. And if she develops asthma because of her kindergarten classroom, that is so disturbing. And to think that it could just be being brushed under the rug. I mean, we are a huge town with like so many businesses. How is it that Things like <laughs> replacing the drapes are being discussed when there are schools with a black mold issue. This is so dangerous. These children are sitting in there for six hours a day. They can't even open up the windows. And that makes me so sad to think that it's not being handled or that it's being told that it's not an issue or that the school's getting phone calls before the health department comes to be told that the health department's coming and bleach is being sprayed. Like, this is alarming and I'm just not okay with it. And I don't, I'm a full-time, I work full-time, I own a business. My husband, he works full-time. I can't be a stay-at-home teacher and as a tax-paying citizen, I deserve to have a safe place for my child to go to school. So thank you for your time. I just wanted to finish my thoughts. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak for the council? Declare public communications closed. <coughs> Item eight, council communication petitions. Councilman Bosco. Okay, I guess <clears throat> I'm gonna say some pretty unpopular things tonight, but they have to be said. Um, I'm not Condoning, I'm not against what the kids did for the walkout. If that's what they feel that they had to do, that was a great thing. But if we took some of this um, feeling and emotions that we're doing for the walkout for, for guns and put it towards the opioid addiction, it would be a wonderful thing. We, we, we're losing more people with opioids than anything there is. I mean, I think we had 30 deaths uh, last year. We're, we're, we're getting alerts every week of, of at least one person overdosing and we're saving them naloxin. And I really think that it would be a great thing if, if, if we could all band together and put some of that energy also into something on drug addiction because this opioid is killing people and, you know, 
it's a dirty drug and people think people deserve it but I would say just about every kid in any of these schools are being affected by this it happens to good families it happens to bad families it happens to just innocent people that get tied up because they went to the doctor and they got some prescriptions and their life is ruined for the rest of their life and um, I think now we really need to start pushing and trying to do something on this and like I says if we just used a bit of what nationwide of what went on uh, uh, over a shooting uh, uh, and I'm not I'm not trying to downplay it at all but we had 60,000 people die last year with over opiates and we're not it's not a big thing and you know something peer pressure does make a big deal and I think that if these kids start pressuring their friends that are using this stuff maybe something will change and let me tell you anyone that thinks they're safe on this opioid problem they're living in another world because it could be your kid it could be your family it could be your husband your wife this stuff takes down everybody and I, I really do feel that we need to as a community start getting together and getting around this too it's fine to have a march if you if that's the way you feel about gun violence but we should be having a march on the opioid addiction problem also and and tie all this in because we are our, 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 our kids our family they're dying and they're dying in big numbers and there's no no outrage over it and, it, and it's pretty sad because these kids I'm sure no people had died of heroin so it probably was the wrong time to say it with the other speakers coming in here and trying to um, talk about the gun violence thing but it's really something that needs to be said we really need to worry about this and take care of it because trust me it could be a family member and and, it, and it's going to take down people um, I also take offense to uh, what was said about brushing things under a rug nobody here is brushing anything under the rug you have to send out samples you have to wait for things to happen and um, when, when, the, when the information comes back everyone will know and then we'll do the next set of tests if we need to but you know it, it is being worked on and also Bob made a joke about changing the curtains uh, we're, we're not having any intention on changing them curtains um, but I, I just really I would love to see something happen on the opioids because it's really a scary thing and uh, I guess that's all I have to say thank you thank you Councilor Sakala um, thank you just a couple of things um, Jessica Lee Sue um, thank you guys for coming I will say that I will be there in spirit um, honestly I wish that myself and my kids and my family could walk they have a karate event um, but I support you I stand with you I think it's a fabulous fabulous thing that you're doing um, Lunell and Makayla I'm sorry I wrote it down right the first time and then I like that couldn't be right and Rich um, please understand we are working on it we hear what you say um, we hear your continued concerns I will say that Councillor Davis has been really vocal and instrumental on this so give her a lot of credit she's she's cracking down um, and I'm hoping that if there is any update that we will get it tonight and I'm getting a nod so hopefully we'll have something for you and please understand we are working on everything that we can on this side okay. thank you Councillor Grisotti yep. Uh, Jessica, thank you for uh, organizing uh, the walk. I think it's a great idea. Uh, myself and my family will be there. I know that I had responded to your email. Uh, thank you for that. Um, in regard to the opiate situation, th that is a, a, a major problem, a major issue uh, in all parts of, uh, of Enfield, not just one particular. And I totally agree uh, that it does affect all families and everybody involved uh, to the people over at uh, Barnard uh, testing results are, are, are not in um, 
Yes, I, everybody sitting here knows that there's a mold problem and an issue. Things are going to be worked on to get done uh, for, you know, safety and health-wise for all students and teachers uh, that are affected. Um, I kind of like, would, would like to know what are the kind of statistics, uh, you know, in the nurse's office about these kids and teachers that are being affected. I mean, if there's like a real, real lot of students that are being affected, um, you know, if we have to move the, the kids to a, to a different area, then why not? Why isn't it being done? Go back and forth, please. So, um, yeah. You know, so, but, you know, thank you for, for bringing that, that to light. Uh, Bob, in regard to the light at Enfield High School, um, uh, I, I agree. I think it should be a, a done issue myself, being, living right, right next to the school. There hasn't been any big major issues with that uh, area uh, in regard to that. So thank you for that comment. Jack, thank for your uh, info in regards to these reports that you brought to us. And uh, I know I'll take a, another look at that myself. But, but thank you and for everybody else that made their comments out here uh, tonight. Uh, so, so thank you. Councilor Ungar, then Councilor Denny. I just wanted to thank everyone for coming out and expressing your opinions. We actually listen and we care about what you're saying. And thank you for the invitation to the march. Um, I also wanted to thank Joan Lawson at our last um, council meeting. I just wanted to thank her for her kind words with regard to the CADCA convention. That's it. Thank you. Councilor Denny. Yes, well, I've been at that school three or four times. I, uh, I've said it before, the last council meeting, uh, room seven has got to be the place. Uh, I asked the principal. Uh, I try to get a hold of the uh, superintendent of schools. There's no, no one will give me an answer about moving the children out of that classroom. I don't know why they can't hold a class in the, in the uh, all-purpose room or whatever the case may be, but they're in there. And you don't have to go in the room to know that there's a problem. You just have to stand at the door. Uh, so I haven't got that answer. I know we're working on the the problem, uh, I'm, I'm a little nervous about uh, no mold and mold and what they're really telling us. Uh, so I'm uh, a little apprehensive myself. Uh, talk about the uh, drug problems. Uh, I was at a wake tonight for a 20 year old. Uh, it was a friend of my uh, grandson's, same age. Uh, the young gentleman was in my uh, house more than once. I coached him in Little League. So it is a big problem, Joe, and it hits everybody. Thank you. Councilor Davis. <clears throat> I need my glasses to make sure I say the names right. So, well, first I want to say Jack and Bob, um, with all your knowledge and about the buildings, actually we have two slots on the joint facility uh, committee, and I did not see your application yet. So hint, hint, wink, wink. Maybe you should fill it out and step on board and help us with all of this. It'll be greatly appreciative. We need all the help we can get. Jessica, um, I hope you got my email. I did. Okay, good. I was like, oh, did I RSVP? Sometimes it doesn't go through. But uh, thank you for doing this. I definitely stand with all of you. I will be there to march with you with my family also. We wouldn't um, miss it. My daughter was one of the ones part of the big walkout at JFK. Um, and I, I have the utmost uh, respect for her. I understand we have a heroin problem, and you know, guns and heroin both have personally affected my life. They both mean a lot. But also, someone that when you lost someone to a gun, also, it is the same pain as losing someone to heroin. So, we do need to do a lot with heroin. We have CAB that works hard in our town and a lot of other things. We meet monthly on different heroin things and Tom's I believe the chair of that um, once a month so we do and, and if we do a, a run once a year for it I think we should do a march for it too and have the energy uh, but Lee don't uh, you stand proud um, what you're doing means a lot in uh, because of anything else being said don't think your march is any less than another march all of us have personal feelings and something hits home with all of us so you keep your passion, man. I'm very proud of you. Sue, so you're doing a great job. Thank you. 
Well, I'll start with Rich first, because, um, well, Rich Linnell and, and Micaiah, but uh, Rich, I don't know um, personally and sorry of how many kids went to the nurse. I just know from a bit of parents telling me that their kids have gone, that, that there's a bit I've not gotten number. I hope we do have one, because that would have been the easiest. Um, and I do agree, we had a beautiful school, Nathan Heal. So if we knew we had an issue of mold in one building, I don't know why we didn't move the kids to, to another building instead of closing that up. We probably got mold in there now since it's been closed up. But uh, that would have been the right thing to do and, and fix. And I understand there's test results, but when, it, when it's our loved ones, you're right. You know what, even that one extra day well, bur it burns my God, and it's not my child. If it was my child, I give you guys respect. You came up here and um, you talked with a lot of respect. You were very kind. I would never have been able to sit there knowing it's my kid and been half as nice and respectful as you guys were. So thank you. And I, I know that's not easy being a parent and to not just scream and shout and rip everybody's head off. We, we are trying to find out what's going on. Nevertheless, you know, the teacher was removed back in, the teacher's back having issues because she's put back in this permit, right? And, and these poor little kids, well, guess what? They're not being removed. And all I can say is you're very lucky your child's not highly allergic to mold like the teacher is because it'd be 10 times worse even though your child shouldn't have to go through any of this. So I personally want to say sorry and if I could wave a magic wand and have fixed it, I would have. This is um, pretty bad, this is unacceptable. This is really wrong. You do pay taxes, and each one of us sitting up here work for all of you out there. That, that's our job. You put us here to be your voice in the fight for you. Um, so I'm sorry it's not fixed yet. Um, so I, I think that's, I want to make sure I answered everybody. Yeah, not putting it under. And Bob, I'd have to agree with this, the light. So I didn't want to miss this, because the amount for that light we can actually repair uh, five roofs on our schools. So I agree, we need to use the money wisely. We all work hard and pay our taxes. So, you know, thank you for coming and speaking. And, and I'm hoping to see those applications soon. Uh, all set? Councilor Falk. <clears throat> to uh, a piggyback on Joey, um, since 2000, the rate of people who overdose on drugs has been rising. Opioids now are responsible for more than 115 deaths in the United States every single day, according to the National Institute on Drug Abuse. Equally alarming is the fact that le legitimate use of these pain <clears throat> relieving medications can pave the way for addiction and illegal activity. An estimated 21 to 29 percent of patients who are prescribed opioids for chronic pain end up misusing these drugs and about 80% of those people use heroin, <clears throat> an illegal opioid, uh, previously um, misused prescription opioids as well. So just a few facts. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Okay. First of all, I'd like to announce that on Friday and Saturday is the Women's Club art show down at the high school, Friday night from 7 to 9 and on Saturday from 12 to 3. So be a nice um, event to see some of our work that our students have done and support them. Next weekend on the 31st is the Spring Splash down at the Scanic River by the Scanic Watershed. I was down there this weekend. The water's nice and high and fast, so the racers ought to come in really quickly. And as a, I guess, with the high school, we just should clarify that the high school light, there's a lot of different costs out there, but all the costs are around a half million dollars, and the roof at Henry Barnard School is 1.6. Really so. She has the floor. We, have, we are putting in the, the grant application for the Henry Barnard roof through the facilities. It has to be designed we are also looking to have an infrared done of the roof to try to at least make it stop leaking in the places that it has. It's gone long beyond its lifetime. We found the date. We have corroboration. The roof is over 30 years old, so it does need to be replaced. So 
With that being said, I mean, a lot of work is being done by the facilities committee to try to get stuff done. Unfortunately, every roof is beyond what we're able to do through CIP. So we as a council hopefully will work on getting a way that we can do the roofs in an organized fashion and probably keep our books in a little bit better order so we don't get into a situation like this after all of us have long gone from sitting on the council. So I like that after that, I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules and move item E to miscellaneous and proceed to vote. Second. Motion made by Deputy Mayor Suzak, second by Councilor Falk. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing no to all those in favor, if I show of hands, those opposed? 11 in favor, zero against. Anyone else like? I just want to publicly acknowledge Fire Chief Billy Provencher, Officers Maynard, Officers Garris, I apologize if I ruined his name, and Officer Maganoli, who went into the river and pulled a young, a young individual out of the car who unfortunately was making a uh, terrible choice, but they went in to the river and they pulled her out safely, and they all, fo all four unharmed. Just want to recognize on behalf of the town council their acts of bravery. I think it's great to show that, again, our folks do a great job. So, uh, Councilor Bosco. Yeah, I just want everyone to understand, uh, as much as even if we had the money to repair the roofs, the problem is anything up over 600000 has to go to referendum. So it's not like we could even do anything without going to referendum. So uh, it sort of does put us a catch-22. Move on to item 8, excuse me, item 9, town council report. Excuse me, town manager report. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, included in your packet is the project and activities report. Um, just as a note uh, for Mr. Sheridan, um, there have been ongoing updates with respect to the Honeywell project included within that report. So those are um, available in the packet, uh, Mr. Sheridan, if you have an opportunity to look at that. Uh, but uh, at this point in time, we're nearing project completion and we're getting ready to begin um, validating the system functioning. Uh, correctly so we can uh, clear and uh, move on. Um, with respect to several items that were talked about at the last council meeting, uh, I did want to address those uh, and was asked to do so tonight during my report. Uh, first, the, um, uh, I'll address the issue of Enfield High School and the lighting uh, and the lighting wash on uh, Riverview Drive. Um, I've been informed that uh, Public Works uh, buildings and Grounds has uh, taken some uh, technical actions and done some stuff and uh, the light wash is now significantly reduced. Uh, we are waiting on um, uh, planning and zoning to uh, bring out the photometric meter and take some measurements uh, so we can clear uh, that particular issue uh, for the final occupancy um, certificate at the facility. Uh, with regard to the issues at um, Barnard and a few other items, uh, on the uh, March 5th council meeting, Councilor Davis asked a series of questions. One was, uh, why was Public Works at Barnard uh, over the weekend? Uh, in response, the answer is that uh, the electrician responded to a boiler fail alarm. Uh, the boiler repairs were made to ensure adequate heat and hot water for Monday morning. Uh, Councilor Davis then also asked, uh, what did we do specifically to clean, uh, I believe it was uh, room seven um, at the school with respect <laughs> to the air. Uh, response to that comment, uh, uh, let's see, there was uh, several areas of capturing and properly cleaning leaks in the occupied areas, roof patching, repairs as needed, prompt replacement of water damaged ceiling tiles, monitoring building ventilation to ensure maximum operation, dehumidification, north wings only, uh, application of mold mildew inhibitor spray above drop ceiling, uh, and that was also north wing only. Um, Mr. Richard Waska uh, asked uh, who was involved and responsible for determining what needs to be done at Barnard. Uh, the response provided was it's a team effort. DPW works with leadership BOE, the school principal, in consultation with experts, uh, consultants, and the health district. With request, uh, with respect to Mr. Waska's question, how much has been spent addressing the Barnard roof leaks? 
approximately $25,000 so far in this fiscal year. Uh, dehumidifiers, $5,200. Ceiling tile replacement, $1,100. The mold survey was $1,000. Water damage material removal was $4,200 for an approximate total of $36,500. Uh, Mr. Waska also asked whether or not, uh, excuse me, why did DPW staff wear hazmat clothing while working at Barnard? Uh, the response is that the second shift custodial crew leader on occasion will help replace damaged ceiling tiles. He prefers to wear, quote, hazmat, end quote, coveralls to prevent residual dust and ceiling tile debris from falling on his clothes. This is not a requirement for ceiling tile replacement, but coveralls are available to staff if requested. Additionally, what were the results of the building mold survey? And this is based on a verbal report uh, that was provided by the consultant. And I should note that this memo is slightly dated March 13th. Uh, small areas of water stain piping insulation and wood framing were identified above the drop ceilings around classrooms 7, 15, and 16, including the adjacent hallways during a March 6 survey. All materials were noted as dry during the survey. Stain was caused by water leakage through the sheet metal roofing deck. Discoloration was due to rust, dissolved materials, and possibly some mold. Recommendations were to remove water impacted materials and to clean and seal wood. Note, air testing was not done. Federal and state health departments and the North Central Health District discourage mold testing as mold is present in all indoor and outdoor locations and concentrations vary widely daily and hourly. Recommendations are to always eliminate moisture to control prevent mold as most important step. Mr. Waska also asked what if anything had been done as follow up to the survey. The stain piping insulation was removed, the stain wood framing was cleaned, disinfected and sealed, and the leak points in the metal roof decking were spray sealed. Uh, also there was the question about what was reported to the school nurse. As per the superintendent, illness rates are no higher in those classrooms as for the remainder of the school. What complaints have been received was another question provided by Mr. Waska. As per the superintendent, none other than from one teacher, specifically classroom seven. Um, on other items, uh, Mr. Sheridan had asked with respect to the PCB lighting ballots at JFK Middle School, uh, and those were addressed as part of the Honeywell performance contract. Uh, then there were some also, uh, there were also some questions with respect to PCB abatement at JFK. Um, and Mr. Sheridan, I'll skip the long and get to the short. Uh, the EPA requires that all PCB containing material with concentrations over 50 parts per million be managed as PCB bulk product waste when removed under the Toxic Substance Control Act. Uh, in addition, once the presence of such material is confirmed, EPA requires building management steps to minimize occupant exposure, as well as planning for material removal. Similarly, DEEP regulates materials having PCB concentrations between 1 and 50 parts per million. Uh, Mr. Tcats had asked questions with respect to the Enfield Street school gates being open during off hours. Uh, custodial staff opens the gates at 6.15 and closes them at, uh, excuse me, 6.15 a.m. and closes them at 5.30 p.m. Monday through Friday for the bus entry and exit. Buildings and grounds crews uh, also worked on filling the potholes, which was another question uh, that Mr. Tcats had uh, asked. Those are the responses to the questions that were presented uh, during the March 5th uh, council meeting uh, that council had asked for uh, a reply to. So uh, that's why we uh, read this memo to you on the record. More than happy to provide a copy uh, of this document to you via email later uh, this week, tomorrow morning. Uh, and uh, with that, more than happy to answer any other questions or concerns that uh, we're capable of. Any questions? Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Uh, item number 10, a town attorney report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, my office, we attended uh, an in-state and afternoon uh, update on municipal law put on by the Connecticut Association of Municipal Attorneys. It was very, very uh, informative. It's an update in regard to freedom of information, land use. Um, they had some good sections on if you're, you know, properly doing RFPs and bidding. I'm glad to say that we're in conformity with all their recommendations. They had a lot of updates, and we're well aware of this uh, with the FOI on meetings and complying with citizens' requests. We do a very good job at that, and that was reinforced there. And also it was very um, interesting, I think, um, 
gratifying. They talked about a lot of the land use cases that go up on appeal and when towns lose, the reasons why. And a lot of it is miscommunication. They didn't get enough input from either their staff or legal people before they made the decision. So I'm glad, as I think I've told you in the past, we, we've conducted and we have one more left with the ZBA, um, sort of a listening tour with my office and all of our land use commissions, chairman, vice chairman, some of brought secretaries with um, our planning director and also our town planner, just to really talk, a lot of new people on board and talk about what our procedures are, our policies, how to conduct hearings. And it's been very, very informative. They said that's one of the great ways to zone in and be able to give the education and the information to avoid a lot of problems. So I think it's been successful. And what it's leading uh, in this town, what we're going to do after I conduct the last one, we're going to have a lot of sample questions come forward. And we're doing a workshop because a lot of them have asked for training. And we're going to be doing it. We're going to bring in a land use expert. We've done it in the past. We'll also have freedom of information. Um, uh, component of it with Mr. Hennick as we've done in the past. But I think it'll really be a cohesive, uh, collaborative effort with all the land use people and our staff so that we're on the right page moving forward. Got a lot of new people. I'm very impressed by their commitment, their talent, um, and their real concern for the town as to why they want to serve. But they want the tools to be able to do the job right, which is very heartening. So I think we have a good group on all of the land use boards going forward. And I think we were able to talk out a lot of different things where they think there are things that have been lacking that they need um, to assist them and we're going to help as best we can provide them. Brian's been um, helping me coordinate those and make sure that the staff has been there that works under his direction um, which will culminate in the as I say the workshop that we're going to be doing in June we have some tentative dates and we're going to continue the dialogue with the land use uh, boards as we go forward and also I've made uh, known to them especially the chairman just like we do if they have questions they can funnel them through their chair um, I, I sort of imposed a, uh, to be consistent policy that they go through Brian uh, so that he is aware of the questions uh, and what is being asked and what the concerns are of the boards and commissions. So I think we've done a lot of good in streamlining. And of course, as you know, towns, you know, that's where we get into trouble is on land use and, and going into court. It can be expensive. Um, it isn't good for public perception. It isn't good for business, being business friendly. And I, I find a lot of it is just not having the right tools or the information or the training to, the, to, do, to do the job uh, correctly. So I'm very um, happy we attended that seminar. That was reinforced. And I'm glad we undertook that a few months ago. I think it's going to um, reap dividends in the future for us and for the town. Thank you. Any questions? Chris, I just have one question. From the last quarterly meeting, mm -hmm. the gentleman asked about our standing in the solar panels out you know, on the uh, south side of town. Have we heard anything about that? I want to make sure that we have standing in that as well. The last, I mean, I've talked to Brian maybe as an update. I mean, there's a formal process that's triggered when applications are filed. Um, so I've been told that we'll be kept apprised when that occurs, and then we'll be able to advise the council and the appropriate agencies as to what we have to do to uh, intervene where we have standing. Um, I can say, Mr. Mayor, that uh, last week, um, Mr. Cirillo's uh, administrative assistant did reach out to PURA to ver verify that no application had been filed with respect to triggering uh, the, uh, um, the period for, for notification in our application for uh, interested party status. Do we get notified so, when they, so, or do we have to keep checking? My understanding is that we will be notified. In this instance, we wanted to make sure yeah, that so for whatever reason, we did not miss that notification. Can we keep that? I'd rather be proactive as opposed to sit and wait. Correct. And we'll we continue to check it, uh, periodically to make sure that we do not miss Correct. the opportunity to file for that status. Perfect. Thank you. Moving on to item 11, special report of special committees of the council. Any reports of the or committees? Councilor Falk. Uh, I was at a, a, a CROG meeting today, the Transportation Subcommittee, and the uh, state is hurting for funding, as you all know. And um, what the issue that they were trying to push today is there was a suggestion that the money uh, from sales on car, new cars, new car sales tax, which I think they were proposing to start moving that to the transportation fund in about three years. Well, they're hoping to, to push the legislature to move that up to this coming physical year. That's how bad they're hurting for money to, to do the road projects and, and all the other things that Krog's uh, involved with in the, in the uh, town of Enfield. So very important. Uh, I'll let you know what happens. Thanks. Councilor Bosco. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> one of the things I forgot to ask <clears throat> at the DPW uh, committee meeting, uh, where is our snow budget? Especially now with another 
nor'easter right on the door. So, uh, I mean, you probably can't answer me right now, but if you can get that to us at your earliest convenience, it would be appreciated. Thank you. Councilor Denny. Yeah, public works, uh, just the council's information, uh, I forgot to, almost forgot. Uh, we uh, decided that the sidewalks in the northeast Thompsonville is a go, and uh, we decided not to bring it to the total council. The three of us just decided that we're going to do it, and that's, that's, that's the, all. That's the purpose of the policy, so good right. job on your guy. Good Correct. job. That's all. Okay. Item 12, old business, uh, page one, appointments. A one through one two or three we have none. On page two items four excuse me bless you items four through seventeen I don't believe we have any. On item page three bless you items eighteen and nineteen we have none. On item B appoints by the town manager one through twelve. No appointments at this time, sir. On page four items C and D remain on the table. Uh, item thirteen new business no consent. Item B, appointments, um, items B1 and B2, these are just uh, still stay on the table. We have no appointments for town manager on C, D, or, or planning and zoning commission. Item E, does that remain on the table? Item 14, items for discussion. A, we have no consent agenda, it's A. Item B, appointments, town council, we have item 1, prison, let me make sure, no, item 1 stays on the table, item 2, Prison Town Liaison Committee, the term of Gretchen Hall, expired on 3-1-2018. Do we have an appointment or a uh, nomination? Deputy Mayor Suzak. I'd like to nominate Gretchen Pfeiffer Hall for, um, to continue her work on the prison liaison. Motion made, second by Councillor Muller. Any discussion on the motion? Suzanne, just items discussion. I don't have to move this to miscellaneous. We can vote on it, right? New bit? Or should I move it? We, no business you can vote on it. We can vote on it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do we need to make a motion to close nominations? Motion to close. Oh, but once you close nominations, all those in favor say aye. So before we move. Okay. So I think we, that's what I should ask that first. So maybe we withdraw the nomination. And then we'll have to move items. Items. We'll have to make a. B2, 3, and 4. Yeah, suspend the rules and move 2, 3, and 4 to, to miscellaneous. I thought new business could. So it's items for discussion. It's not new. We, we can't. We have to move it to miscellaneous. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're right. So uh, please withdraw the nomination. I'll withdraw it. <laughs> Motion to withdraw the nomination of Gretchen Pfeiffer by Hall. Councilor Muller. All those in favor of withdrawing the nomination by a show of hands. 11 in favor, 0 against. So I have a motion for items 2, 3, and 4, excuse me, 14B2, 14B3, and 14B4 to move to miscellaneous. Suspend the rules. So right, second by second. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Second. Second by Councillor Denny. <coughs> Any discussion on suspension rule moving these to miscellaneous? All those in favor? Those opposed? We have 11 in favor and zero against. <coughs> Items 14B, 5, and 6 remain on the table. Clean Energy Committee. Item 14C, any appointments from the town manager? Not at this time, sir. Appointment D for P and Z. Council approved. We have none. All right. Now we move to item E's on miscellaneous. So we move to item 15, miscellaneous. So we can take a nomination on the first, then move. Okay. Just going to make sure we're following the rules. There we go. Item 2, 14B2, Prison Town Liaison Committee. Again, do we have a nomination? Deputy Mayor Suzak. Motion to approve uh, the term of Gretchen Pfeiffer Hall for um, another two years as, on the prison liaison. Seconded by Dep uh, Councilor Muller. Do I have a motion to close nominations? So moved. Councilor Falk. <coughs> Seconded by Councilor Denny. All those in favor by a show of hands. Those opposed? 11 in favor, zero against. Any discussion on the nomination? Hearing none, roll call please. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Gretchen Pfeiffer Hall. Councilor Ungeyer. Four. Councilor Arnone. Four. Councilor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Gretchen Councillor Crisati. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny. Gretchen Pfeiffer Hall. Councillor Falk. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Is eleven in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Item B fourteen B three, Prison Town Liaison Committee, the term of Nelson Rodriguez expired in three one two thousand eighteen. Do I have a nomination? Councillor Denny. Nomination of Nelson Rodriguez uh, for uh, prison liaison. 
uh, until two uh, two twenty nine two thousand. We have a motion of Nelson, second by Cal uh, Councillor Known. Any so a motion to close nomination by Deputy Mayor Suzak, seconded by Councillor Falk. All those in favor, show of hands. Those opposed, any discussion on the main motion? <coughs> Hearing none, roll call, please. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Nelson Rodriguez. Yes. Councillor Ungayer. Four. Councillor Arnone. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakawa. Nelson Rodriguez. Councillor Casati. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny. Nelson Rodriguez. Councillor Fall. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. There's 11 in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Item 14B4, Prison Town Liaise Committee. The term of Office of Tim Slade expired on 3 1 2018. Do I have a nomination? Deputy Mayor Suzak. Second. I have to make nomination a nomination. To Tim Slade to. A nomination to Tim Slade. To for another term and the Prison Reyes Long Committee. Second. Seconded by Councillor Falk. Is there a motion to close nomination? So moved. By Councillor Falk. Second. Seconded by Councillor Crosati. By a show of hands, all those in favor of closing nominations? Those opposed? We have 11 in favor, zero against. Any discussion on the main motion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Tim Slade. Councillor Ungayer. Four. Councillor Arnone. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Tim Slade. Councillor Crisotti. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny is out. Councillor Fong. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Is 10 in favor, none against, no abstentions. Item E, uh, discussion resolution, a resolution approving lease renewal for educational resource children, Inc. Be it resolved, persuade to section two, term of the lease by, by and between the town of Enfield and the educational resource for children, Inc. The Enfield Town Council does, does hereby approve the renewal for the lease for one additional term prepared by the town manager's office on March 12, 2018. So moved. By Councillor Falk, seconded by Councillor Sakala. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungar. Four. Councillor Arnone. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Crisotti. Four. Councillor Davis. Four. Councillor Denny is still out. Councillor Falk. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. There's 10 in favor, none against, and no abstain. Item 16, public communications, but I don't like to speak for the council at this time. Jack. Jack Sheridan, 7 Buchanan Road. I don't want to seem like I'm beating a dead horse, but my the, the, the problem I was trying to per, persuade you with with the uh, PCBs was that the only time you have to worry about the PCB, according to the report that I made part of the record tonight, was that if you disturb them, the, the, the uh, ratings undisturbed were within spec, and that the concern was that if they did the the uh, construction work, they would then disturb it, and then you have to dispose of it according to the same, really, rules as asbestos. So, and they've already been interim sealed with sealer and taken care of in the interim until maybe some construction is done. So that was my, you know, the reason for turning that in is that it's very clear that undisturbed, and again, the point I made originally was, if you read it, common sense would then suggest if, if if you took that literally, like everything is, you'd have to tear down every building, and, and re including this one. So that's that's my only point there. Um, oh, and then the report on the, I, are you saying I can get a copy of the report on the Honeywell? Is that online, or is it? You said we'll, it, uh, we'll answer that, Jack. It said it was in the, uh, what did you call it again? The uh, Project activities report. Would I be able to get a copy of that? We'll an we'll answer that after. Thank this. you. That's all. Yep. Thank you, Jack. Anyone else like to speak for the council? Bob. Bob T. Katz, <coughs> Woodgate Circle. Thirteen buildings need to have the roof replaced, plus Fermi and Nathan Hale. The, the old numbers, and I think the new number for 
barn is 1.6, it was really a 1.2. So you can see the increase in two years. We, we need $12 million just to f fix the roofs on the existing buildings. You need 2.4 between Fermi and Nathan Hale. And then you add the 25%. So we're really in a bind. Uh, it, not only the, the town hall doesn't need a roof, according to the last report. It may need, it's two years since then, it may need it now. But the police station needs to have the roof fixed. La Magna Center, the Senior Center, uh, Stowe, uh, the li main library. So we're in real trouble here. So I don't know where we're gonna get the money. We should go have a roof referendum. We should have a parking lot referendum. Uh, take care of those things that are most important. Those, those should be priority one. Um, the other thing is, I was working in Hartford Hospital um, on the second floor above the mail room. Uh, they had a water break. Of course, when there's water, a water break, the fire department has to show up because it could be an explosion if it hits the electrical. So the, every, every fire department responded, they had the hospital surrounded. But they had people in there immediately taking out the water, all the ceiling tiles were down, they had dehumidifiers, they, had, they were doing tests. Every day they had the, the, all these rooms that were wet were sealed, nobody could enter them. It took two weeks to straighten everything out. But that's how the hospital reacted. But we don't seem to react. We let the people in there and let them get sick or supposedly get sick. We don't react that way. Hospital has a different reaction, the way they do things, and we should be reacting the same way. We should not allow people into areas where the roof is leaking, there's water coming in, because it's, it's potential of fatality. So I, I don't see why we don't respond in a, in a better fashion. I think we're responding like it's no problem, and that's not right. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak for the council? Hearing none, public communications closed. Item 17, council communications. Brian, just, I thought the report for Honeywell wasn't going to be ready till the summer, the final report. Is that correct? So, to... Your point, that is correct. So right now they are, the, the work is being finalized. Right. They are getting ready to commission the system. So they're going to bring in, in the next two to three weeks, they'll bring in all of the appropriate equipment to gauge that, you know, the heaters are heating to the certain temps, that the, the cooling units are cooling to the certain temps, and then they'll clear the system after they benchmark it. And we're um, going to have a presentation before the council, and that's at some, at some point. Uh, correct. So we'll have that for you, Jack, at that point. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Councilor Davis. Through the mayor to the town manager, can I get a copy of the work orders of what was done at Barnard, all the stuff you read off to, because um, it should be down in a work order. Thank you. Anyone else? Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Councilor Fox, second by <coughs> Councilor Underlay. All those in favor? <coughs> 11 in favor, zero against. Meeting's over.